Hello everyone. Welcome to the fourth part of asynchronous JavaScript. In the previous section, we have learned about promise and how we can replace a callback function with promise. In this section, we are going to learn about async await. Async await returns a promise only. It is just a more cleaner way to implement promises. We are going to convert the code of promise with async await. But before we start converting, let's go through the syntax of how to implement async await. For that, I'm going to write a piece of code in the editor. Let's say creating a function called test. I'm not going to write anything inside the function and calling the function. This piece of code I'm going to run in the console of the browser. This function doesn't do anything but by default you can see that it returns undefined. Now in the same function let me just add async keyword and run this code again. If you observe instead of returning undefined now it returns a promise. It means just adding async at the beginning this function will automatically return a promise. So looking at this output, we can clearly understand that if we want a function which returns a promise, we can add the async keyword at the beginning, as you can see in the code. Now let's talk about the await statement. Await can be used only inside an async function. So the syntax goes something like this. In this piece of code, the getShowData is a function in which await will be used. So it begins with an async keyword. For example, API call function fetches data from server and returns to the data object. The API call will take time to return the data. If you write the await statement before a process which returns a promise, then it will wait until the promise is settled. In short, await says that let's wait for the API call function to finish the job. If you do not have await in this case, then the program will move on the next line without waiting for API call function to finish the process. Let's practically implement async await with the very same square function which we wrote using promise in the previous video. So here is the code we wrote with a promise. The square function which returns a promise and inside a promise there is an asynchronous process that is set timeout is used to simulate that and here we have the resolve where we are passing the square of the number passed when the function is called. Let's try to convert this code with async await. Await is a kind of statement which is used inside an async function only. That means I can create a function called calculate and this is going to be an async function. So I'm going to write an async at the beginning. Because the square function returns a promise, the only thing I'm going to write here is let result1 is equal to I'm going to call the square function and I'm going to pass the value 5. Now I'm going to begin this function with an await statement. That means an instruction is given that let's wait for this square function to finish the job let the promise get settled and then it will move to the next line so now let's try to display the value of r1 that is the result one we are going to call this function calci as you can see in the output that await actually waited for the square function to finish the job and then it displayed. In the previous code, when we were using promise, we write the coding with chaining syntax. Assume that 
if we have to follow the similar kind of pattern here then it is even easier with await so I can say r2 the result 2 await I am calling the square function again let's say I want to pass the result which we received from the first function call and that we are passing to find the next square and I am going to display this value as well let's see what is the output now the first call will take two seconds the next call will also take two more seconds so you see that the first value was 5 so we have the square of 5 that is 25 and the next is 625 so this is a simplest example of async await async await is a better way to write promises